in those days, did you did you have any contact with, with President O'Donnell as a student? Yes, I did, uh, and, and had a real uh, pleasant one. During that time, the you know they had married housing, uh, and he had a little old house, plywood, I guess you might say, uh, two rooms if it was that big, and a tornado hit uh, on the campus, and it it kind of jumped from one place to another, and it hit top of Sullivan Hall, and then I lived down where. I guess the, uh, medit uh, not the meditation chapel, but down where the, uh, some of those, uh, it's changed there. But anyway, tornado, I, it was raining. I get up out of bed and I go close the window. And all of a sudden the, the ceiling just shoo, was gone. Wow. And the wall just fell over and I'm standing there, you know. And, uh, but anyway, uh, that was a scary experience. But. Dr. O'Donnell took me and my wife into his home until they repaired it. We lived upstairs. We had, uh, he said, the refrigerator is yours. Anytime you want to use it, make yourself at home. I, I don't think you'd find too many presidents to do that today. Now, maybe Doug here might, but uh, uh, I don't know about some whether they would or not, but he took us right in his home and made us welcome until they repaired and, and fixed uh, uh, where we were living. Now, were you, were you a junior or senior by then? or? Uh, I think, uh, yes, I think I was uh, a junior at that time. Well, so you, you were a star football player. So. Well, I don't know about star, <laughs> <laughs> but I played football. I, I tell you, President O'Donnell was very good to students. He, he was a very uh, uh, a good president. He, I think he, uh, he was just good to all students. But this, he, was, this was in the Blanton House. Uh, yes, right, mm -hmm. where, uh, right where it sits today. Mm -hmm. uh, you haven't had, moved in there yet, have you? No, not yet. <laughs> we, we, we might do that here sometimes. So. Yeah. Well, go ahead and jump in here. Well, first thing I've got to do, Paul, is correct you on a little, uh, a <laughs> little you would. glitch you had in your in your introduction. You you said Roy was the coach of the uh, Purples at Madison High, and uh, that, those were the Royal Purples. They they weren't just the plain <laughs> plain Purples. They were the ro Royal Purples, and they were very regal uh, when uh, when Roy was coaching them. And uh, uh, that's where I first met Roy Kidd mm -hmm. was at Madison High School. He was my freshman high school general science teacher and I thought my first question today would be to ask him something about the hydrolysis of water or something like that but I won't please don't but we won't uh, we, we won't we won't do I don't that, think I taught you much general science but I might have taught you a little football at that time he you know there's a lot of there's a lot of science leverage and angles and that sort of thing involved in uh, involved in football and and Roy taught that uh, taught that part of it very well <laughs> Now, when you first when you first came to Eastern as uh, as an assistant football coach and then became a head football coach, in those days there was no such thing as they didn't call it Division One and and One Double A, what they now call the BCS and the FCS. But wasn't it like University Division and College Division? Wasn't yeah. that the terminology? I, I think they it was. Then? I think it was referred to more as as much as anything. It was Division Two. Division Two. Mm -hmm. And so we were playing. We were playing Division Two football when you came here. And several years after you came, you had one big. You had one real big Division Two uh, football game. And I always regretted that I missed that. I was away in 1968 in the uh, in the Army uh, when Eastern played Ball State in the Grantland Rice Bowl. Right. But from from your perspective, looking back on that, how big a turning point was that? for football at Eastern Kentucky University that year and winning that bowl game? Well, I, I think it was big because Ball State was bigger than us, uh, even in size as far as, and I'll never forget going to the TV station and being interviewed with the coach at, at Ball State. And night the interview, uh, I can't think of the guy that interviewed us right now, but he asked, uh, uh, he made a prediction that Ball State was gonna beat us. And I was sitting there thinking, I don't know what you've seen on the film, but I don't think they are, but they may. <laughs> but you always, you know, think you can. But I, I think the big thing that that turned the program, when I took over, we were two and eight the year before. Mm -hmm. We won the first game and the last game. And uh, uh, I, I think we got some good kids, good character kids that, that uh, wanted, you know, to play football, wanted to get a degree, and they worked hard. And we had some great leadership as well as some really fine football players. And uh, I, I think uh, one of the things we did there too, I think I might have signed the first black kid that ever played here. 
and his name was Aaron Marsh, who turned out to be an excellent football player and was drafted uh, by Boston at that time was their name, mm -hmm. uh, which is New England now. And, uh, and I think we just continued to grow right on up through the years and, and get, and then in 1978 when we went one double A, uh, that, that's when the program really took off because we jumped from, I think somewhere uh, 45 scholarships to, to 70. And well, I think it would, we jumped from maybe to 60 and then the next year or so up to 70. But anyway, one double A was, uh, uh, was given 70 scholarships at that time. And then of course, everybody took a 10% cut after that shortly and, and went to 63, which, mm -hmm. which I understand they're still at 63. Yeah. And uh, you talk about Aaron Marsh and of course, Aaron, I, I remember the first time I ever saw him on the practice field, what a, what a fast, fluid, runner he was and you know just almost effortlessly and and as I recall he could catch about everything anything that he could touch yeah. he could uh, he could catch but but Aaron and, and you had you had good players before him but but uh, Aaron I guess was the first of your players to be drafted to the National Football League and uh, or he, among among the first if not the first I, I and, think he was the first of and course. course and as Paul said you had you had 41 over the years but uh, my wife and I had the pleasure to travel to the 1AA uh, FCS. I still call it 1AA, and now it's football championship subdivision uh, game at Richmond, Virginia this last weekend. And at, at, at breakfast, they were talking about they had tried to go back and estimate how many hundreds uh, of players that Roy would have uh, would have coached during his years at Eastern. And of course, it would be a substantial, uh, a substantial number. But Roy, I'd have to think that one of the great pleasures to you, as you look back over your career, perhaps as you know, maybe more or as much as those two national championships, have been the young men that you worked with and what they've gone on to accomplish after they've left Eastern. Well, that's true, and and, and I keep in contact with a lot of them. Uh, you know, I they'll call me and. Uh, and I call them. We, and of course, uh, I've learned how to use the email, and <laughs> and we email each other and stay in contact. And, and yeah. that's great to see, see the kids that you coach far back in there. You know, uh, to see how well they're doing right now, and and, and 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 they stay in contact with Eastern, and and I try to encourage them too.